yellow sheet. Shoshana Yaakov, song number six. Shoshana Yaakov, Sahala, Samecha, Piro, Tam Yaakov, Chelet Mordechai. Shoshana Yaakov, Sahala, Samecha, Piro, Tam Yaakov, Chelet Mordechai. Tshua Tam, Aita Your poor of enjoyment. I will introduce you to our master of ceremonies tonight, Sam Gilston. Thank you, Rochelle. That was a wonderful day. Great to be with you guys. Great job. That was my trumpet. I should have brought it. Good evening, everyone. What a great crowd. Haksamea, Hachwarim. Uh, we just uh, dove in the Mincha before we came in, and uh, probably you know what I was praying. Please, God, let everybody laugh at my jokes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, Purim is, is a great holiday. Uh, everybody dresses up in costumes, and the men dress up as women, the women dress up as men. Uh, this is the one day of the year you can come out of the closet and declare, I'm Jewish and I'm proud. <laughs> but um, one of the um, one that's also a day where everybody can act foolish without having to apologize. Uh, the other 364 days, you can just say you're practicing for Purim. Uh, uh, my one problem with Purim, though, that is that um, you start dressing up little girls when they're two or three, you know, as queens. And then when they get to be 16, we wonder why they're Jewish American princesses. You know, maybe there's some connection there. Uh, anyway, I don't know about you, but uh, I've been fixated for the last few weeks watching the news out of the Middle East to North Africa. That's, that's quite a story there. It's very inspiring to uh, see these people fighting for democracy, fighting for uh, religious tolerance, fighting for an end to corruption, fighting for uh, women's freedom. And I'm sure everybody here joins me in wishing the Mazorti movement good luck in their efforts. <laughs> anyway, as you see the newspapers, uh, they have all these stories about the new road rage. Uh, people get mad at people driving and talking on cell phones. I mean, I don't know if you, I, I'm, I get very mad at that. I guess it's, it's against the law in Maryland. But I don't think anybody is following that one. I see people driving with cell phones. The other day I'm driving, this guy's on the phone, and he's making a left-hand turn, which wasn't bad, but he had a cup of coffee in the other hand. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how he did that. But, uh, which wasn't too bad, because I saw a woman after that uh, was driving with a phone in one hand, a cup of coffee in the other, and she was putting lipstick on with the other one. But the worst, I have to tell you the worst. We were up in New York last year in Brooklyn for a wedding in, in Borough Park. I don't know if you've ever been up there, the Hasidic neighborhood in Borough Park, the black high pads. Anyway, there's a guy driving down the street. He has a cell phone in one hand, a cup of coffee in the other, and he's laying to hill. I mean, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to move along here. Uh, anyway, um, you know, it's not just cell phones anymore, it's smartphones. I don't know if you have smartphones, because the smartphones now, you just don't talk on them. They have all these apps. You know, you can, you can uh, do, you can have navigation, you can do your taxes while you're driving. Um, it's really fun. The, um, I don't know if you know it or not, but a lot of the technology in the cell phone comes from Israel. They're very, they're very advanced in that. And the Israelis have now come out with their own cell phones. And uh, I'm not sure you, I would, I bought one, but I'm not sure I would recommend it. You know, it's a little bit of an Israeli attitude on a cell phone. But when you use the navigation thing, I don't know if you have one of those, you, you press the button and a voice comes on and you where you're going and you say the address and then the voice directs you um, as you're driving along, which is just what I needed, somebody else in the car to tell me where to go. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I have one and um, so I, I needed to go somewhere and I, 
I push the button and the phone comes on and says, it's about time you ask for directions. <laughs> so I push in, it says, where do you want to go? So I said, 125 Adams Street. It says, you're not going to your mother's? <laughs> But yeah, you're driving along and he says, don't go so fast, you want to give me a heart attack? <laughs> then you finally get there, yeah, and he says, you've arrived at your, vector, de de you've arrived at your destination. Rok Hashem. <laughs> uh, now, uh, when the candidate asked me to uh, MC tonight, uh, he made it very clear that this was a family program and I wasn't supposed to do any off-color stuff. But uh, as you know, those of you who know me, so uh, she, she's nervous there. She's oh, uh, no, no. okay, okay. What I'll do is I'll, I'll cut out the jokes. I'll just tell you the punchlines. All right. So if, if you know the jokes, you can laugh. If you don't, then you can punch me. So I cut this one. No, I think mutual of Omaha. Uh, okay, you know, oh, he knows that. Okay. Now this one, actually, I, for those of you who know, I. I, I interview and do a lot of reporting downtown. And this joke was told to me by an undersecretary of commerce. And it said, you know, the punchline was, Jake, how could you? Me, I have to. Okay. <laughs> and he knows that one, okay. And this one was actually told to me by a former deputy secretary of the treasury. Everyone says she is. All right, good. Okay. Anyway, on with our program. We have a great program. You can't just say we have to finish the program by 9 o'clock in order to have dinner. Uh, uh, our first uh, uh, performer is a, a Lon Klein who's going to do a yo-yo demonstration. And we call Elon the yo-yo ma of the yo-yo. And uh, is it here? Oh, there you go.